I see the aging in this tree, and the woodpeckers are starting to get into it up here, on both sides. <laughs> and the weather now, I'm turning green. I might ask the principal to come by and redo it over, brighten up again. It'll outlast the school next time. <laughs> yeah, when did you make the, what year? It's, uh, 20, 2010. My name is Art Bolton. I'm a Simpson artist I'm from Prince Rupert and Terrace. And I was sent to residential school at a young age. Spent 10 years in residential school. And I took up native arts in the school board from George Clutesy. And uh, I had about five art teachers from there while I became an artist. Two of them were students of Emily Carr and the group of seven. I'm happy what I'm doing today. I'd rather give than receive. That's me, I've done all my life. Learning from being uh, abused in residential school, I'd rather give than receive. And I don't, I'm not too mean with anybody or anything. I'm just not prejudiced against no one. And I love working with kids. And some of the teachers are coming to me now to do Pro D days and teach them about residential school and my arts. And I'm working with a Jewish community to teach them about our residential school. What I learned from a residential school was the hatred that's going on between Northern Reserves and the Southern Retirement. When I went there as a little boy, I was always beaten up or picked on because I was from up north and I was in their territory. It's, it happened it's, it, later on in the years, I became friends with them and I was a quarterback and we played English rugby and football, and I had two of my biggest brutes of guys who weren't good looking, they were my bodyguards. But I had fun, even in the school board I was doing rugby. And we were always picked on when we, because we were natives in a, in a white community. At the same time, I had my two bodyguards with me. <laughs> they were always protecting me when I was quarterback. At the end, um, we really hurt the abusers and later on during the years the abusers became our close friends. We went to dinner parties, we went to uh, their weddings and funerals. So there was nothing happening after. There was no um, prejudice against us anymore and it felt good. That's why I stayed in Port Alberni for almost 30 years. This, this was a cedar log donated by one of the farmers who chopped the tree down. But it wasn't that well, it was real knotty. I had to work around it and it had a twist in the bottom, which I've managed to get around it. And I turned out really good. I ended up fixing all the mistakes. And the teachers and I came over. It's a Thunderbird. The teachers came out, the principal came out, and uh, all the staff, they come and helped me carve. The students came out and helped me paint from kindergarten to grade sevens. I'm very really proud of what it accomplished after all these years. Uh, how many kind of carvings have you made around the city? Three. Well, uh, two totem poles and two big plaques and a garden mold for the garden in Grandview School. I got a bear and a mother bear and a little cub in a Batania School. But it's, uh, I always look at it as a teacher and a student. The panels I did were for uh, Ricky's uh, Reconciliation Day when we, they asked to do the carving. I did it for them and it showed up at City Hall, it was there for a while, and the school board hung them up in the both buildings, Grandview and Thunderbird. It was happy because when I went to pick it up at uh, City Hall, my friend was there well-known actor, Johnny Depp. I made friends with him. So was, he used to eat in my restaurant and I was proud to see him there. He knew that I was putting the panels in the city hall, so he showed up there. And I'm always happy when we keep in contact with people who had eaten at my restaurant. My restaurant was called Pulicum. Pulicum Restaurant on West Coast Native Seafood. And it turned out really good in 10 years. And the landlord decided to sell the building and put up a high rise, so I went back to teaching again. 
It was always fun working with little fingers who would come and help me paint. I love working with a kindergarten class. I like working with special needs kids who were in school here. And this is Thunderbird School, and they came out of it. Just to see the smiles on their faces made me happy. Sometimes it's kind of sad to go into a classroom when you already recognize a one child is under foster care, and I recognized that right away. And she had no pencil crayons or pencils. So I looked over and her classroom didn't have anything. So, uh oh. So yesterday I went out and bought some uh, pencil crayons and self pens. I'm going to give it to her next week when I go back to the classroom. It's me, my way of giving. When they give me money, I give it away. It's, and it's not they said well, money is the root of all evil, so I love seeing the little ones happy. I'm just happy to give it to them. Yeah. There's another story that called uh, Bullhead and Raven. Raven is our trickster. And, it, uh, and one day there's a bullhead swimming around the shoreline. A big wave, wave flew him over, knocked him into the beach, and he was in a deep hole and the tide went out and he couldn't get out. So Raven was sleeping and all the splashing woke him up. He yelled down at him, be quiet, I'm trying to sleep. He didn't, kept, he was, he wanted, the bullhead wanted to get out of that little pond. So Raven flew down and grabbed him by the neck. Today you'll see the bullhead with a big head. This is one of my drawings. I did an original painting like that back in 72, which I sold out on my prints. But I got a lot of stories that I tell around my carvings and my paintings. Some of them were from elders that I had learned from. Art, our native art, is, it was slowly disappearing. Like, um, I'm a Kassan student. Um, what I learned was to learn to do better carvings. But I learned from the channel's elder, Wilson Williams, and he made one, three totem poles to my one the three little foot ones. I always went over to visit him. My brother and I lived across the hall and me and my wife went over to visit and uh, I always went to Wilson. And I was surprised. The styles are different compared to our Simpson and Northern native parts. But I loved working with him. He's telling me stories about all his carvings he was doing. But I got carried away listening to him. I forgot to carve. Here he finished three carvings before I got mine. <laughs> But it's always um, like I was raised in a channel's territory. It's to me in my home. I'm a survivor. I've gone through, uh, I almost drowned when I was a little baby three times. And I got electrocuted three times when I was logging. And then I uh, had a heart attack. I survived that. And I had cancer, which I survived. But uh, like my granddaughters were always there for me. I was going through this black tunnel and uh, coming out of my heart attack and the uh, nurse was opening my chest up and putting gunpowder in there. Poof. My granddaughter grabbed me. At the same time I was just going into this black tunnel. At the end I seen a white figure and I'm not prejudiced against anyone or anything and I don't know you and my, my granddaughter just grabbed me and pulled me. I heard her voice and you're hurting my papa and she pulled me back. Twice she done that. She did that when I had my cancer too. I went to the same black tunnel. But before that, I went to a psychedelic room. When they pulled me out of there, I said, how come you didn't play uh, Cheech and Chong music on there? <laughs> Tommy Chong is a friend of mine. And, and then when I went to that psychedelic room, I just seen all the colors floating around. Me and my daughter, Laverne, we help, we give. We look like, uh, I know they were on welfare, so I, we, we bought $300 worth of groceries before they left to give to them so they could bring home. That's what my daughter learned from me. Now my grandkids are learning that. And the students that I teach, they're learning that too. The one class I did here you know, with a handicapped person, I love working with them. They are wearing their hoodies and it's like they're always sitting in the corner when they say, Papa Art here, and the hoodie comes off, and you see a big smile. It makes me happy, as and everybody comes over and hugs me, and teachers come over and do the same thing. Oh, that one there, I'm gonna enlarge. 
Uh, yeah. Photos. Yeah, most of the students did the one on the outside. Oh yeah. Mm. It's the animals that are from the garden. Mm -hmm. You know, like the bumblebee, hummingbird, oh, yeah, and um, there was another one there. But just come stand beside me. You know, I'm getting ready to fall over. You know, because he's got the camera on us. <laughs> <laughs>